Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gary Spracklin. I'm not a CEO or a CEIO or a CEEIO. I'm a teacher, I'm an educator, and I have a passion for seeing digital technology transform learning, which is why my title, as, as was so wisely said, seems a bit odd, the death of education. Well, I really believe that in the next decade, we will see the death of education. We'll see the death of education and the birth of a learning revolution. What we're talking about today is learning. We're not talking about education. We're not talking about a system that's dated and that's past its expiry date. We're talking about a new opportunity, one which sits so many of you have shared today that you are embracing in business. We are now embracing in education. Let me take you forward five years, 2019. Five years because that's the average time a child will spend in secondary education. When we look at 2019, I think we're going to be asking the question, what were we doing? And no, I'm not talking about my shirt. I'm talking about what were we doing in our classrooms? Why did we ever think it was a good idea to put 30 children all of the same age with, this, with just one teacher in a room? You know, we look at our education model in this country and we see it time and time again. Whatever stage children are in of their education, we shove them into boxes. We shove them into rooms and expect them all, all 30 of them, to learn from that one person in short time blocks. You know, when was the idea that a 50, 60, 50, 60 minute lesson was the best ideal time to learn? How many of you take time to warm up in the mornings? You know, how many of you, you know, have your best ideas in the middle of the night? You know, why are we limiting our children to learning in these small pockets of time in these small spaces? And a lot of this is face to face. I just don't think this model of pushing children in boxes works. You know, we ring a bell at lunchtime and expect all of our children to be simultaneously hungry. You know, do, 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 where, where, where else would we do that? And this is not me just showing these things. There's a world of people that are screaming at policymakers about this. And increasingly, we're seeing a revolution. We're seeing a difference. This is a, this is a quote back from 2001. And that's going away back now. And already, we're starting to see this development. After all, when was the last time you, asked your, you put your employees in the situation? Do you have the 42-year-old's office and the 43-year-old's office? Does it work like that? <laughs> I haven't seen that when I've gone around Google today. I believe we're living in an exceptional decade. I think when, I look, when, when my grandchildren look back, they'll be saying to me, Papa, whatever they're going to call me, Pops, or whatever it may be, you lived in the most exceptional decade. The decade when it all changed, when learning was transformed. You lived in the learning revolution era. And we're seeing this firsthand. We're seeing this at the academy that I work at. We've taken a really forward-thinking approach, and we've embraced digital technology to support learning. In August, we became the first large-scale deployment of one-to-one -one Chromebooks in the country. We had 800 delivered in one day, which is a really scary thing for anybody who's got to unpack them. We're a very unique academy. We're an all-through academy. We take children from the age of three right through to 18. And we believe fundamentally in a stage, not age approach to education. So children in our academy are not grouped upon the ages that they were born between. We don't push them between two Septembers. They move through at a pace that is suitable for them. And we support them accordingly. We have a rich technology environment. We embrace change. And we seize the opportunities that are available through all of the things that we've shared this morning. This is one of our learning bases. This is a new campus that we opened up this year. This space is called West Space. And in this space, up to 90 children will learn. It's called a super class. And as you can see, they're here on the tablets in the middle of the room. Everything about this space is about being comfortable, collaborative. Many of the words that were shared this morning about the spaces within Google are ones that we're trying to emulate in our approach building that community, building that sense of learning, building that passion that needs to go on for a lifetime. Learning doesn't stop when we leave school. Learning is something that should be happening in your organizations and should be happening for you. This is that classroom. It's, a, it's, a, it's called a super class. It's been specifically designed to accommodate up to 90 children. This isn't 90 children with one teacher. This is the same teacher to student ratio. This is three teachers working in this space. This room, and you can't see all of it, you're kind of missing a third to the left. You need to go bigger on your widescreen here. Um, the bit on the left there um, is, is very similar to that. 
And no walls in this space run parallel, so acoustically it's fantastic. No, no sound vibrates between. You've got comfortable, flexible furniture. This is a shoeless learning environment. The children come in, they take their shoes off, so they feel at home, they feel relaxed, they feel like they're safe, and they collaborate and they communicate together. There's 90 children, up to 90 children in this space. There's 30 tablets and 30 Chromebooks. These kids are always connected. That's not just by the devices that we give them, that's by the devices that they bring in from home as well. So where are we at the moment? Where are we on our journey and where are we seeing the difference? We now have teams of teachers working alongside each other, spaces with access to a range of resources. We don't study little blocks of things in small units of time. We take longer time, we work thematically, and our interaction with, is with many people. That's not just inside the classroom, that's outside the classroom. This is a model we're not just working in our primary phase, this is our intended sixth form centre that we're currently working on. We've got great plans for a better future. All of this is leading to better learning. Teachers, mentors, parents and community members working together for the benefit of their children. Students connected when needed sometimes. Last night I was on Twitter and I had one of my year seven mathematicians asking a question. I deliberately did that teacher thing where I didn't really give them the answer and kind of pose the question in a different way. Instantly, it started off a debate, not just with Year 7 students, but with some of my GCSE Year 11 students, talking about cube numbers. I didn't need to know the knowledge here. I just needed to open up the opportunities. Learning's happening everywhere and anywhere. It's not restricted to the classroom. Yesterday, we, we, we had a hangout session with a, with a teacher in Idaho. We're leading our internal training through Hangouts, bringing in people from all around the world, talking about the innovation that's happening there. Traditional time patterns are being completely destroyed by this model. You don't need to ring a bell and expect everyone to be hungry at the same time, because as you build better learners, as you build a better community, you have that understanding and that, and that flex and that collaborative approach, and learning is guided when needed. I think these are all skills that are changing the learners that are coming through. And I truly believe that all schools will be working this way within five years. I want to share what we call I Pack a Learn, which is our style of learning for a short video. Thank you very much. I Pack a Learn. This is mixed age children working side by side, an agnostic approach to devices, shoes off, 3D printing rich, just the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>